Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to work on this trans cooler. So we got it removed and I had a couple of buddies come over and we kind of, we got this old trans cooler off and we moved it to the back just to kind of start looking to see where we're going to put it. I had a buddy of mine, he said that he could, uh, he knew exactly how we should mount it, where it should go, how it should be done. He had it all figured out. So let me show you what he came up with. Yep. That's how Jacob said I should put this in my car. No, the car is not crooked either. It's the heat exchanger. He thinks we should put it in this way. I haven't ruled it out, but we are going to consider some other options. All right, so here's kind of what we're thinking. We're going to run this heat exchanger back here, and you can see there's a big opening in the trunk where we used to have the AC condenser. Let me show you what you may not have known. There's also an opening on this side, so there used to be a floor there, and we got rid of that. So the way this previously worked was air actually exited this way. So the fans, the previous setup, the fans would blow air down and under the car and cooler air would come in through this side area over here. And I'll show you this too, just so you know, if you close the, well, hold on, I'll show you. If you close the trunk, pardon the delay, and you look up in here and turn the light on, there's a bunch of openings. This is all cut open. So this let air move into the trunk through that entire section. So essentially all of this was an air vent letting air in. So we'll still have those two openings to let air through and then air can exit this way. So what we're thinking, we're going to put this heat exchanger somewhere back here, moving air downward, and we're going to put a pusher fan on top of the heat exchanger so that it moves air down, but that way the fan is away from the exhaust. Uh, that'll keep the fan protected. We also just looked, so I run spow fans on this car, and whatever fan we put on here is also going to be a spow. I guess I'm just a fanboy of uh, their fans. So I looked, and I can get, they got one for like 70 bucks, and it moves 650 CFM, or for a lot more than that, they have one that moves 1100 and something CFM. So we're going to get that one, because I'd rather have too much fan and not need it than not have enough fan. So... It's a 10 inch fan, it moves 1100 and some odd CFM. And we're just gonna basically probably build a small shroud and bolt it to this uh, heat exchanger. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna mount this and or how we're gonna position it and how we think we're gonna bolt it down. And then I'll explain how the airflow works. Having a hard time figuring out what's the best way to explain this. So we're just gonna kind of jump in. So here's that opening. I threw some plates. This is just for acting as a spacer. So this is giving me a little platform, and we're just going to set the heat exchanger on top of these. That way it holds it in the right spot, because we're going to have this thing blowing air downward, and we want to have some space between the uh, heat exchanger and the muffler so we're not restricting the airflow. So I'll show you that real quick. All right, so roughly speaking, this is how the heat exchanger is going to go and where it's going to go. So you can see front to back of the car, it's pushed back about as far as we can go. We just have a small gap here, and that'll hopefully, that's you know not much. We have it pushed to the right as far as we can, within reason. So you can see here we've got a fitting. Ha uh ha, -huh. let's see. Now you can see. So that's where a fitting goes, and you can see it's pretty close. I'm actually assuming I can buy a half-inch NPT to something AN 90-degree fitting and screw that in. And then the hose end will just come in like this and hook right to the fitting. This other side's got a lot of space, so that's not a problem. So let's look at the height. So off of the muffler... We got some space. Let me show you just a second. All right. Now with the uh, tape measure, we've got, what, inch and a half probably? So we got some room, and we're not blocking the whole heat exchanger. Maybe half. If you look at it this way, yeah, that's about half. But it's not even over the full length. It's only a little over half. So maybe 30%. No, half of a half is a quarter. Okay, call it 30%. So maybe 30% of this heat exchanger will have an inch and a half gap between itself and the muffler. And the rest is either open or it has a pipe, but the pipe's rounded and anyway, I'm not worried about that. So this is mostly unrestricted and this is kind of how we're thinking it's gonna work. So essentially what we'll do when this is finished, we're gonna seal this whole area off so this big opening will be gone. I'll figure something out. I don't know, that's probably gonna suck. But we'll seal that off and we'll have a fan sitting on top of this heat exchanger, uh, pushing air through the heat exchanger downward. So now you're probably thinking, where's the air come from? 
Well, check this out. You know how there's a floor over here? Well, not on my car. I cut it out. Also, that's ugly. I need to clean it up. But I cut that hole out so air can come in from that side into the trunk, and then it'll move downward through this heat exchanger. There's also an opening here. I know this looks bad, but this is where the little tail lights go. I cut this metal too. So like if you close the trunk, show you this real quick. When you close the trunk, you know how you have this little area here? Well, look at mine. This is actually an air vent that lets air in. So that whole thing there is open. You got a couple of lights. Then there's a giant opening right there, another light, and another giant opening. So that's a large source of airflow. And this is air from, you know, a couple feet above the car. The other one is from underneath the car down there. But either way, both of those stay dry because the air has to move upwards to enter. So it keeps the trunk dry. So I don't have to worry about water. And both, at least this one's a cool source and that's like a okay source of air. So yeah, that's how air will get into the trunk. So now, probably need to figure out how we're gonna build this bracket and how we're gonna install this. And we've got some options. So one option would just be to, we have a flange. You know, we cut the flange over here, but there's still a little bit of a flange there. We could probably drill and bolt to that or something. On the other side, we, have a, we still have the original flange on the seat exchanger, so we can easily, there's some holes right there, or we can drill our own holes and bolt to that. So that's cool. But uh, another option is to build essentially like a little cage around it that it drops into and then bolts in. Probably be more work, might be more awesome. So, but also if we did it that way, then we could seal to the cage or to the floor that this bolts to. So it might make the rest of the build cleaner, even though if this bracket takes longer. So I don't know, I'm not sure how we're gonna build it yet. But roughly speaking, I think we're gonna put it about here. And, uh, I'm not going to go into a long story as to why, but one of the benefits of doing it this way, let's see, I'll use a tape measure real quick to show you. This tape measure to this original floor is roughly three and a half inches or so to the bottom of that sheet metal. If I was to cut it and go to the top, it's over four inches, four and a half, you know, to this surface right here. So this should be enough room for a fan, hopefully. And then we're still gonna have a wide open trunk, essentially. We're gonna be putting, probably not a turbo, but we are gonna be doing some other stuff back here to make the car faster. So we wanna preserve as much trunk space as possible. And that's one of the reasons we wanna keep this heat exchanger low. Another reason we're cramming it as far right and as far back as possible is that leaves space over here. You could tell we could just about fit two of these if we really wanted to. So that leaves us an option of adding an additional heat exchanger should we need one, maybe an auxiliary one for the radiator or an oil cooler or, you know, who knows what. But uh, we've got some extra space so we can potentially add another heat exchanger. So it's always good to have options. You know, if you can plan ahead, that's, you know, it saves you. And then plus that sheet metal there, if we cut that, you could even have a heat exchanger that went in this region, went across. So who knows? We may use some of that one day for you know, whatever we need to cool off. All right, guys, so we've decided we're gonna cut what we just marked out of here and build a new floor that's lower. And then we're gonna put a flange on the bottom of the floor to bolt the floor into. Price didn't explain that well. But uh, basically, you'll have sheet metal that goes down and it, there's a flange running around the perimeter and the floor will bolt to that flange. The idea being that whatever heat exchanger setup I decide to run, I can just, basically unbolt and reinstall so I could change the setup and all I got to do is create a floor that bolts in so it's easy to change so you can see here this line is actually really straight I had to this took a while to figure out but let me show you yeah see that from this point let's see that's about straight look at that pretty dang straight line so we got the angle grinder, we actually just started cutting right here and then I remembered that I haven't filmed anything. So, bring you back in a second after we get this cut. Well, here we go. We just got done cutting. That is considerably bigger than it was before. So, turned out pretty good. We still got, we need to clean this side up to get the paint off and figure out how we're gonna do this. But we did do the parts we cut, we went ahead and cleaned them up, so. Show you that. Yeah, see. Anyway, making progress. 
Well, we just got this cut, so this opening is way bigger than it was before. And we cut it straighter than last time too. So looking pretty good. Let's see how it looks over here. It should be pretty close. That's pretty good. I'll take it. Yep, have lots of room for heat exchangers now. Alright, so we got a little more cutting to do. So we gotta get all this uh, body sealant chunk off. And you can see that flange is poking out a little, so we drew a line and we're just gonna cut that back, as you can kind of tell, and uh, clean that up a little bit. So here we go. Alright, guys, well, we got this cleaned up. As we can see, this opening is really big now. We got this all the way to the wall back here cut. Going across. Forward quite a bit. So the only thing that's really restricting our depth is in this corner. We've got a motor, uh, not a motor mount, an exhaust hanger. But that's really the only thing. So we're kind of still trying to figure out how we're going to do this. We've already cut it. I kind of knew I wanted to do this to make it bigger. So we've done that. And I think what we're going to do is shift gears and work on something else until we figure out how how we're going to do this so previously we'd considered putting our heat exchanger kind of in this area and then have the fan on top and have the heat exchanger about an inch above this muffler with the air blowing down and that seemed like it was a good idea until i realized that this fan's really a puller fan so now we're probably gonna have to flip it all around and the heat exchanger will be further up and that's probably what we're gonna end up with but i want to think about how we're going to install that and how we're going to design this for kind of future proofing it for whatever we decide to put back here later. And a big thing that's important is that all any heat exchangers we put in here, uh, we want to keep this floor level. We don't want anything protruding. So let me show you. I, don't know if this will, I can't actually see my camera right now, but see how there's a wall here? Hopefully that showed up on the camera. We want that to be flat. Here, I'll show you what I mean. So this. Essentially, we want this area to stay flat all the way across, kind of like where I laid this metal. And the reason, so basically, any heat exchangers that go here need to be below that. And then essentially, I can have a, a uh, nothing protruding above this, and this is going to allow me to put other things in the trunk that need to fit there. So that's an important part of the design. 